In 1851, a royal commission, with the backing of Prince Albert, staged the Great Exhibition in Hyde Park. A magnificent glass building was constructed to house the exhibition that displayed the latest advances in technology from all over the world. Afterwards, the surrounding area of South Kensington was developed as a centre for education in the arts and sciences. The Science Museum, the Natural History Museum, the Victoria and Albert Museum and the Royal Albert Hall. The next 50 years after the Great Exhibition saw the development and final move to South Kensington of the Royal School of Mines, the Royal College of Science and City and Guilds Colleges. In 1907, these colleges merged to form the Imperial College of Science and Technology, and in 1908, it became part of the University of London. The college steadily grew and evolved into one of the finest of its type in the world. It was not until 1988 that a fourth college, St Mary's Hospital Medical School, joined to form the Imperial College of Science, Technology and Medicine. Today, Imperial College has 6,790 students and 690 academics, of which 51 are Fellows of the Royal Society, 35 are Fellows of the Royal Academy of Engineering, and three are Nobel Prize winners. Today's pioneering research increasingly requires a multidisciplinary approach. In response to those needs, Imperial College is constantly forging new collaborations with academic and industrial partners. The College has three government-funded interdisciplinary research centres, or IRCs, more than any other establishment in the country. Imperial College offers and seeks the best, attracting people and organisations from all over the world. As a result of this search, Imperial College enjoys healthy relationships with Hitachi, Nippon Steel, Fujitsu and Honda, to name but a few. In 1990, more new ground was broken when Nissan opened their European Technology Centre on the college campus. For many years, the Honda Motor Company was at the forefront of Formula One racing. Success in this extremely high-tech sport means staying ahead of the field in scientific and technological developments. One of the most critical factors is the car's aerodynamics. Honda's search for world-class expertise in this area led them to the aeronautics department of Imperial College. This collaboration proved so successful that Honda built the one million pound Honda wind tunnel. This pioneering facility featured a unique rolling floor giving more precise simulations. Advances in aerodynamics made in the new tunnel were also applied to their commercial cars leading to increased fuel efficiency, improved stability and reduced wind noise. The tunnel has also played a critical role in the development of pioneering measurement techniques using lasers. The science of aerodynamics is fundamental to many industries, which ensures that the Honda wind tunnel continues to be used for a fascinating variety of research. The combination of industry investment and Imperial College expertise continues to create valuable partnerships which produce considerable mutual benefits. For centuries, humans have been using natural materials to make the things we need stone for walls, metal for tools, and wood for structures. But as nature has given materials certain advantages, it has also given them disadvantages. Stone is strong, but heavy. Glass is transparent, but brittle. 
Ideally, we want materials that have all the advantages, but none of the disadvantages. So, we must transform what we have into what we need by inventing completely new materials. At Imperial College, the Centre for Composite Materials is at the forefront of developing advanced materials with high strength and low weight. So, materials can now be given properties that would never coexist in nature. This cloth can be woven, stitched and shaped as though it were cotton, but it is actually glass, and when treated it becomes stronger than steel, strong enough to be used to build this ship. New materials with extraordinary properties were originally developed for extraordinary purposes, like space travel and supersonic flight, but today they are responsible for major improvements in more down-to-earth objects. If industries are to survive, they must continue to improve the performance of their products. To achieve this, new materials designed to be ideal for specific purposes are essential. All modern electronic devices use semiconductor materials and this prolific industry is under constant pressure to make products smaller, lighter and more powerful. Existing materials are approaching the limit of their performance and substantial improvements may only come from a completely new generation of materials. Fundamental advances require fundamental research. Using knowledge extracted from a strong program of basic research funded by the Japanese Research Development Corporation, the theoretical solid-state physics group has been able to address this challenge. To design new materials with revolutionary properties, this team have developed a laboratory inside a computer. With this electronic laboratory, they can design new materials right down to the last atom. These advanced computer models then make predictions about a material's behavior, a material that doesn't even exist. From this, we can start to determine which designs would fail and which should be made and tested. Semiconductor materials will only adopt these new properties when they are only a few atom layers thick. To produce these materials, they must be built atom by atom and then tested to see if they have assumed the predicted properties. Eventually, it will be possible to build a range of remarkable materials designed right down to the last atom with very specific properties, properties that have never before existed. These materials will pave the way for massive advances in electronic devices and, in particular, computer technology. At present, computers must rely on a single processor to process their data. The faster the processor, the more powerful the computer. In the early 1980s, Imperial College started research which aimed to provide computers with power that would make present advances seem insignificant. This is a computer called Alice. It uses not one, but 16 processors simultaneously. Alice breaks down each task into several smaller tasks and then allocates each one to its own processor. These smaller tasks can now be processed in parallel instead of one at a time. The more processors, the more speed, and a method which works with 16 processors will also work with thousands. But at present, their invention has created a problem rather than solving one. They represent such a massive leap in computing that industry has yet to understand the full potential and possible applications for such power. 
In response to this dilemma, the Imperial College team has formed close links with companies such as British Airways, British Telecom and Rolls-Royce, helping them to develop applications which can exploit the enormous potential of this revolutionary technology. One area which is certain to benefit from these advances is real-time computer visualization. A new center at Imperial College is developing this technique for use in medicine. Working closely with digital, General Electric and Japanese scientists, one of their research projects is using 20 advanced workstations to develop computer simulations for the study of arterial disease. Their long-term aim is medical virtual reality. The purpose of the centre is to bring together scientists from the fields of physics, engineering and medicine into an environment where they can develop an understanding of each other's problems, requirements and skills. Here they work together to design more sophisticated and effective equipment for use in future medical practice. The centre, which was founded on multidisciplinary links, has now established several international ones. A worldwide medical imaging consortium which includes the University of Kyoto. A permanent data link with MIT in the USA enables interactive collaborations in diagnostic techniques and operations. They are also the hub of a pan-European information exchange program for infant maturation. The centre is unique to the world and with its commitment to working with other centres of excellence, it is destined to solve the problems critical to the advancement of science, medicine and society. Another health problem, this time emerging by our own invention, is that of waste disposal. Industry's relentless demands for new, more sophisticated materials have led to a number of serious waste disposal problems. These products create more complicated and often dangerous waste which requires ingenious disposal techniques. The developing science of waste management involves the traditional disciplines of chemistry, chemical engineering, biotechnology and civil engineering. Interdisciplinary research and training are therefore an essential part of professional waste management. The research is aimed at solving existing problems by developing methods not only to safely dispose of the waste, but to convert it into other useful products. Protecting the environment has become a new priority in recent times and this centre is committed to training people in new constructive methods of waste disposal. The sensible regeneration of waste products is essential if we are to protect the planet's ecology. But at present, we are trying to preserve something we actually know very little about. At Imperial College's field station, there is a team addressing this massive problem. We have long understood the critical relationship between bees and flowers. One could not survive without the other. But how many similar relationships are we simply unaware of? 75% of the world's species are insects. Most of the rest are plants. So between them, they play the dominant role in the ecological balance of our planet. To maintain this balance, in an age when we're polluting rivers and ravishing rainforests, we need to understand what each species contributes and what effect its absence would make. This innovative centre is developing population biology as a predictive science. The focus of this research is the world's first ecotron. 
These atmospherically controlled environments are filled with different combinations of plants, insects and small animals. Inside 16 simulated worlds, the sun will rise in the morning and set in the evening and it will rain. Each community will be constantly monitored to see how they interact and develop. This knowledge can then be used for the effective management of our environment and could potentially be used to develop standalone ecological systems that could survive, for example, in space. These projects are just a small representation of Imperial College's prevailing search for excellence. Its Royal Charter of 1907 pledges to give the most advanced training and research, especially in its application to industry. Today, Imperial College is constantly striving to increase its range of partners to help develop the science and technology of the 21st century.